This makes no sense to me. The Toronto Raptors have won a couple games, and tonight could have set themselves up for another little pizza party. Now, I get it. The Raptors winning games, the Memphis Grizzlies continuing their losing streak. We have to arrest some of our guys. We got to keep the tank going. Now at this point, right? Like, I get everyone talking about how, hey, the Raptors didn't plan on losing all these games. All that type of stuff. I feel like I have to preface that every time I bring up the tank on these videos. Because if I don't, the comment section ends up going crazy. But the Raptors at this point are going to try and ensure that they are that bottom six in the not the Eastern Conference, the entire NBA, so they have the best odds they possibly can now at this point to keep their draft pick. However, if there's one game, really since the trade deadline, that the Raptors should be trying to win, if there's one game this season that they should have really went all out for in terms of getting a W for this group, it should have been tonight. And no, what it sh wasn't because it would allowed me to play this graphic once again, get hyped up, get the pizza party animation cooking. No, it wasn't because of that. It wasn't because of, you know, the old pizza pizza ads that were happening on the Raptors group. They could get that sponsorship back on the go with two pizza parties for the season for none of those reasons. But they played the Indiana Pacers tonight, the Toronto Raptors did, and the Raptors own the Pacers pick. Now, the Pacers are in an interesting spot in the Eastern Conference this year because they are currently the sixth seed in the East. The Sixers, they've been winning a ton of games with Joel Embiid back in the lineup. The Miami Heat, they were hot there for a little bit, but cooled off a little bit in you know, the last few days or so, lost to the Pacers recently. But if the Pacers fall in the play-in tournament, there's a chance. And with how one-game elimination sort of tournaments go, as the play-in tournament is, really anything can happen. Any which way, you don't know what's going to happen with the specific squad. Well, the Pacers, they could have been knocked out and put into the lottery. That means the Raptors, in theory, if everything worked out the right way, could have had two lottery picks in this year's draft. You know, if we keep the one that we're supposed to potentially send out to the San Antonio Spurs, and if the Pacers fell into the playing tournament and then lost those playing games. So, if the Raptors won this, they facilitated that Pacers pick being a little bit better for us more so in the first place, and obviously how the Raptors are rolling a little bit. I know we're trying to keep our draft pick, all that type of stuff, but tank tomorrow or the next game against the Brooklyn Nets. Tank that one. Tank one of our previous games. Try against the Indiana Pacers. What are we doing with this out here? Why are we trying to sit a manual quickly in this game? And again, the, the Raptors had some moments in this one. This game was really fun until really things fell apart. I mean, it's really competitive. The Raptors had a lead. All those types of things till things fell apart. But sitting Emmanuel quickly due to rest for a guy that, again, was out for legitimate reasons, personal reasons, but had some time to sort of physically rest his body, you know, in previous sort of the last couple weeks. So why are we resting IQ, who's 23, 24 years old, and the Raptors had a game that they probably should have won? It doesn't really make sense to me. We should have rested him in literally any other game to close out this season. I get it, we might be cycling through rest, cycling through players, and all amongst other things, but I don't know. This That that decision confused me from the Raptors organization, from Dark, or whoever decides those types of things. But this game, again, the Raptors lost. There were some positives for this group. Again, we played against Pascal Siakam, who it's always nice to see playing the Toronto Raptors stadium. But Kelly Olynyk was a beast in tonight's game. Just uh, 22 points. He's 6-7 from the field, 1-1 from the three-point line. Just efficient, doing his thing, proving why he's going to be a valuable piece for this team next year when hopefully we have more ambition to be a little bit better for next season. I mean, uh, RJ Bear continues to do his thing, but the guy I want to sort of shed, shine some light on, especially, is JFL, Javon Freeman Liberty, who probably played his best game ever as a Toronto Raptor. Not a 905 er again, was leading the G League in scoring, but hasn't really had that breakout moment for the main roster, for the main group. And tonight's game had 20 points, had eight rebounds, had a one assist, one steal, really efficient, seven to 10 shooting, two or three from behind the three-point line in 33 minutes of action. This is, again, are we expecting 20 plus points per night from uh, JFL? No, but this sort of scoring, this consistency, what he was doing in the G League is kind of what I expected more of with the main roster group. And we haven't got a lot of it from JFL. We've seen flashes, we've seen moments, but he's one of those players that's trying to earn a long-term roster spot on this group. Obviously got the multi-year deals out of the two-way sort of uh, position right now, but is really trying to cement himself as a rotation player for this team in the future. And, you know, 
games like this show the potential that he has at the NBA level. And this is where, you know, again, it sucks to see losing games. It sucks to see the Raptors take a bunch of L's and all that type of stuff. But those growing pains are where you get to see players develop, sort of get the reps out, be able to struggle as JFL has, but then continue to get opportunities to where if he has five awesome games, or I guess four, three now at this point to close off this year as he did tonight against Indiana Pacers, that's a good sign for him. That's a good opportunity to not only just improve his game, get reps at the NBA level, but earn himself a roster spot. Give Masai Ujiri another sort of piece to play with in the offseason when constructing this roster. So, you know, JFL having a nice game is a nice sort of uh, positive from this one. Again, RJ Bear continues to be a beast. I, I glossed over him pretty quick, but uh, in a similar vein to JFL, a guy that... You know, he was able to play through groaning pains. And you look at the box, so you might say, Abaji, what a horrible night, right? Two points, you know, 0 of 6 shooting, 0 of 2 from the three-point line. The shooting is not there. His offense hasn't really been there. He's a decent cutter. He's able to finish at the rim a little bit, you know. But really, overall, since Abaji's been quiet, he's been very shaky on the offensive end. But tonight especially, Ochai Abaji did a really good job on defense, hustling, blocking shots, doing his thing out there on the defensive end. And we know in theory that jump shot is there somewhere for Ochai Abaji. So if he spends the summer getting reps up, working on his ball handling, just becoming a competent sort of three player, I'm not saying turn to Clay Thompson. I'm not saying heck even turn to OG Ananobi, but turn into a guy that can knock down shots consistently and make some solid plays on the offensive end. He is going to be an extremely valuable piece for this Raptors group solely off the defense that he provides and that's going to be huge because again the Raptors have moved away from their defensive center team to you know obviously with OG Hanobi is the focal point of that you know in previous years the 6-9 vision all that type of stuff to a team that has more shooting with Grady Dick as a key spot in this roster IQ you know RJ Barrett's been pretty solid uh, it's got, I guess I don't want to say too much shooting but has moved away from those elite sort of defensive style to Players that have more offensive upside, but again, still can bring on the defensive end. Abaji really fits on the defense of what skill set that he brings to the table in terms of what the Raptors are doing in the future. So hopefully, again, growing pains. We're seeing it. If he can knock down some shots, that'll be a huge positive for us. You know, also in the starting line, Gary Trent Jr., 16 points. Oh, seven from the three-point line. We have highs of Gary Trent Jr. We have lows. We know we know the story of Gary after the past three seasons. But off the bench, Jalen McDaniel, seven points. You know, future rotation player for the Toronto Raptors, according to to uh, Darko Ryakovich. That's always fun. One of the better Bruce Brown games of the season as well. Sixteen points, five assists. Hopefully, just increasing the stat line so he's uh, going to be able to provide uh, some return at this year's NBA draft for a potential trade. But uh, Jordan Wara again, eleven points. Continues to get a few buckets for this Raptors group, which is nice to see. Filled up the box scores, filled up the statue a little bit. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be completely tripping on this, but I think Malik Malik Williams getting his first NBA buckets. So that's great to see. Six points, three fouls, nine rebounds in this game. You know, I don't know if there's a big long-term fit there, but that's a, that's a nice sort of look. But you know, this Raptors group, our team, I was confused why they rested Emmanuel quickly for this game, but... Is what it is. Definitely some positives to take away from this one. I'm pumped to see how these players grow and develop to close off this year and really what Masai Ujiri does with all the assets we have for this offseason. But folks, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. You guys are the best to make it this far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.